This is the second in a two-part series of videos that shows how to use Blender to create a ceramic cup with a handle. In this video, we'll finish the cup and then render the final image. Now we're going to make the inside of our cup. So come down here to this menu and select Wireframe, and then press 1 on the number pad to switch to front view. And then come back down here to these three buttons with the cubes on them and select the first one which will allow us to select vertices. And now we're going to select these top vertices so press the B key and then hold down the left mouse button while you drag the selection box around these top vertices. Then we want to extrude these vertices so press the E key but we only want to extrude them to the same point and so after pressing the E key press the Enter key. And I'll rotate this now to give you a better view of what we're doing. So now press the S key to scale. And we want to scale this to 80%. So just type in 0.8 and then press Enter. So now press the number 1 key again to switch back to front view. And then we're going to press the E key again to extrude. And then if you move your mouse, you can see how we're extruding this. And if you press the Z key, then that will restrict our movement to be straight up and down. So just move your mouse and bring these vertices down to this point and then click on the left mouse button and then press the S key to scale this and then you can use your mouse to adjust the scale. So adjust this until the inside of the cup is parallel with the outside of the cup. And this looks good so just press the left mouse button and then we'll extrude again, so press the E key, and then press the Z key so we can pull this straight down, and then click the left mouse button right here, and then press the S key to scale, and again we'll pull this out until the inside of the cup is parallel with the outside, and then click the left mouse button, and then press E to extrude, pull this down, and then press the Z key again so we can pull straight down, click the left mouse button, and then press E to extrude again and then press the Z key so we can pull this straight down and this time pull this down to about here and then press the left mouse button and then press S to scale and scale this to about here and then press the left mouse button and now we're going to extrude one more time so press the E key but this time we're going to extrude to the same point so just press the enter key now and then I'll rotate this view so we can see this a little better. And now we want to merge all of these new points that we've just extruded into a single point. So if you come over here to this left side menu and scroll down, you should see a button called Merge. So click on the Merge button and then click on At Center. And you can see down here that we merged all of these vertices to the center. So now we've finished the inside of our cup. So we can go back down here and switch this from wireframe to solid. And then we can switch this from edit mode to object mode. And now we can smooth out some of these edges. So come over here to the left and scroll up until you find the smooth button and then press that. And then come over here and press on the object modifiers button that looks like a wrench. And then click on add modifiers and select subdivision surface. Here we can change the number of subdivisions and I'm going to set both the view and the render to 3. The larger this number is the more smoothing you will get but it will take longer to render. So now let's set the materials for our cup. So click on the material button right here and then press the new button. If you have a menu that looks completely different from what I have, it could be that you don't have Cycles Render selected. And this is where you select Cycles Render. So for example, if I were to select Blender Render, you can see that this looks completely different. So come up here and make sure that you have Cycles Render selected. And then to select the surface, press this button right here and select Mix Shader. This allows us to combine two different shaders. So click on this button to set the first shader. 
and select Diffuse. And then click on this to set the color and set this to a light gray color. And then click right here to set the next shader and for this one choose Glossy. And we'll leave the color as white but we're going to change the roughness to zero. So just enter your number in and press enter. This value here controls the proportions of our two shaders. Values of 0.1 to 0.15 will work well for what we're trying to achieve. So I'm going to set this to 0.14. By combining these two shaders in this proportion, it will make our cup look like it's made out of a shiny ceramic material. Next, let's add a simple surface for this cup to sit on. So press 1 on the number keypad to switch to front view. And let's zoom out a little bit. And then click right below the cup to set an origin point. And then go up to the Add menu and select Mesh and Plane. And if I rotate the view, you can see the plane. And then we want to scale this plane to be three times its current size. So press the S key to scale and then type 3 and then press the enter key. And then press 1 on the number pad to bring us back to front view. And then you can grab this arrow right here and pull this up till it's about equal with the bottom of this cup. And then we'll set the material for this plane. So you should still have the material button pressed. So just click on new. And we can keep the default surface of diffuse and then let's change the color to a light blue color. And so now let's add a light source. So zoom out and come up here to where you see the camera and go just to the top right of it and then press your left mouse button and that'll set a point of origin for us. And then go over to the Add menu and select Mesh and Plane. And we want to rotate this plane, so press the R key, and then you can move your mouse to rotate this, or we can enter a value in directly. And I want to rotate this to 45 degrees, so I'm just going to type 45 and then press Enter. And then we want to scale this up to be five times its current size, so press S to scale, and then type 5 and then press the Enter key. And I'll rotate our view so that you can see what we have here. And with this plane still selected, let's set the material. So come over here and click on New. And for the surface, choose Emission. This will allow the plane to emit light. And we can control the amount of light that's emitted by using this Strength value here. And I'm going to set the strength to 10. So just click on the number, type in 10, and press Enter. Now, to see our scene as viewed through the eye of the camera, press 0 on the number pad. We can move our scene around while looking through the camera if we make a change to our preferences. So to do this, click on the View menu and select Properties. And over here, Click on the checkbox next to Lock Camera to View. And then we can turn this menu back off again by going to the View menu and select Properties again. And now while looking through the camera, we can use the scroll wheel to zoom. And if we press the Shift key and then press and hold the middle mouse button, then we can pan the view also. So I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit more. So now we're ready to render our image. So come over here and click on the Render button that looks like a camera. And without changing any of the settings, click on the Render button so that we can get a quick idea of what our scene will look like. And if you're using a version of Blender earlier than version 2.64, then this button may be called Image instead of Render. And by the way, if you want to abort the rendering process while you are rendering, 
just press the escape key. Now this image that we just rendered looks grainy because it wasn't rendered with very many samples, but it is useful for checking things like the lighting. And everything looks good here, so I'm going to go ahead and render it with more samples. So to do this, scroll down here until you find a section called sampling and then click on this. And if you're using a version of Blender earlier than version 2.64, then this section may be called Integrator instead of Sampling. Now after you open this up, find the section here called Samples. And here you can see that rendering is currently set to 10 samples. The larger this number is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. 100 samples produces a nice image, but 1,000 samples will produce a really nice image, but it can take quite a while. For this video, I'm going to set this to 250 samples. Sometimes when you render an image, you may end up with a couple of white pixels at places in the image where they should not be white. These unwanted white pixels are sometimes referred to as fireflies. To help prevent this from happening, we can set the clamp value, which is right here. And I like to set this value to 0.98. And now with these new settings, let's come back up here and press the render button again to render this image. And since I've selected 250 samples, this is going to take a couple of minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video until this is finished. Rendering is finished now, and this is our final image. Now to save our image, make sure your cursor is over the image and press F3. And here you can choose a directory and then name your file. And I'm just going to call this cup.png and then come over here and press the Save as Image button. And that saved my image as a PNG file. If you wanted to save it as a JPEG or something else, then you can just come down here to the Output section, click on this button right here, and you'll get a selection of other file types that you can save as. And then once you select a new file type, just put your cursor back on top of the image and press F3 again and then that will let you select a directory and a file name. Now after rendering our image here, we can go back to our previous view by pressing the escape key. And then if you want to go back to your rendered view, you can press F11. And as a final step, we should save our project. So you can do that by going up to the file menu and then just click save. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.